Thanks for attending our talk. Retention during college is a pivotal problem in biology. More than one in eight entering US freshmen in 10 biology majors, but we lose half of them by the time they graduate. And retention isn't the same for all students. It's much lower for underrepresented minority or URM students with the effect that by graduation, this is percent of degree recipients, they are under a quarter of all biology majors, even though they're nearly 40% of the US population. So how do we close these demographic gaps in retention? Many of us chose our careers because of a field course early on. These courses build science skills, confidence living and working outdoors, and maybe most of all, shared memories and community. These things sustain students through college and beyond. So if field courses serve all students equitably, then they are an important vehicle for retention and inclusion in our field. And that if is critical. We were interested in whether an early, fairly light field science experience, a two unit course that you can tack onto a normal course load could improve student outcomes in STEM diversity. Introduction to Field Research is a non-majors class for freshmen and transfers first offered at UCSC in 2016. And we studied this class to understand whether we might scale it up to serve all of our roughly 300 new ecology and evolutionary biology majors each year. And we asked these questions. What are the, first of all, outcomes of this two unit field course compared to the required lecture class for our major? Second, what the outcomes are like for underrepresented minority students compared to their well-represented peers. And then third, how the field course experience yields these outcomes. What are the mechanisms and the elements of the experience that matter? We use mixed methods. So for quantitative analysis, we use Likert scale surveys like this to ask students about core science competencies, connection to STEM, and persistence in the sciences. We included a suite of specific skill and ability items, and then the 36 item pits or persistence in the sciences survey. And we use survey data to compare the field course to the large lecture course that we require and the responses of URM versus non-URM students. We looked at changes over time by comparing student responses at the beginning and the end of each class. And then we compared the PIT survey scores taken just at the end of each class between the two courses and between those two student groups. We also use qualitative methods, including focus groups, interviews, and journal prompts to explore things like student motivations and aspirations in the field course specifically, and to understand more about the how of the course outcomes. And then finally, one of us, Alexandra Race, conducted an ethnography of the course in fall 2019. We created a code book for themes like community and connection to science skills. And then we use the qualitative software deduce for analysis. Looking first at gains in self-assessed skills and interests. When we compare the field and lecture classes, the two unit field course in blue outperformed our five unit lecture in black. So this figure shows you change from the start to the end of each course in students' self-reported skills, interests, and sense of community with the effect of a lecture core class in black and the field course in blue. And these are changes, not absolute scores on that one to five Likert scale. You can see that both courses led to gains on average without declines, but also that across the board, Students in the field course experienced bigger gains. Some of them expected field research skills went up more in the field research class, but others not necessarily so expected. Graduate school interest, awareness of research opportunities at our campus, a sense of feeling welcome into STEM also went up more on the field course. One result of the greater skill gains appears to be stronger science identity and belonging. This figure shows you for the five pits science identity items how students responded at the end of the lecture class and the field class. These items are statements that students can rate agreement with, such as I have come to think of myself as a scientist and I feel like I belong in the field of science. On all five items, field course students scored significantly higher than lecture students. So more answers shift, shifted over here to the strongly agree and agree area. And the field class appears to be then boosting students' sense of belonging in science more, which is strongly linked already to greater science persistence. Moving to how different demographic groups benefited, this figure shows how on the field class specifically, underrepresented minority students gained more on some self-assessed skills than their non-URM peers. So we have URM students in green and their non-URM peers in gray. The circles show the mean scores at the start of the field class the squares are the mean scores at the end of the class. So the line connecting them is the gain during the class. 
And you can see that everyone gained, but that the difference in gain between student groups on these last two items was significant because URM students reported less experience at the beginning of the class in experimental design and species ID, and then caught up with their more exposed peers by the end of the class. So the course leveled the playing field for these students. Linking these specific skill gains to the persistence measures, this set of figures distinguishes responses from URM students in blue from their non-URM peers in orange. And URM students had significantly higher scores overall on two components, the project content ownership part of the PIT survey and the science identity component. And the non-significant trends on most of these other components are consistent with this difference, except for on the networking construct, which you can ask me about at the end. We found four main themes to explain the why and how this field course improved STEM persistence. First, we heard a lot from our students about the value of minimizing barriers and specifically about minimizing experience gaps among students in the class. These are, there are all these barriers to taking field classes that we might not see if they don't apply to us, having to do with financial means, access to word of mouth and other information about opportunities, previous experience, science belonging, and constraints around commitments to family, community, and jobs. So to do a field course in a way that makes it possible for students of all backgrounds to take it means minimizing these barriers. And we explored design for inclusion more in this paper, but specifically in our two unit field course, we heard especially from students about how the barriers reduced the class closed gaps for them in experience in both outdoor work and science. And those two realms were both important like this student related, quote, I really enjoyed the experience and I'm not really scared of it anymore. I was a little nervous going camping because I didn't think I'd be ready for it or equipped for it because I'd never really done it before. So the fears of like, what if I run out of food or what if something happens? That's completely gone. And the quotes about camping in particular, because that's a place where real disparities in experience existed at the start of the class. But some key course elements that seem to support this kind of gain in the class included providing equipment and food so everyone had what they need and learned together how to use it. And then pre-teaching outdoor skills, talking about things like toileting and sleeping, being really clear about what to bring and expect. And then not just telling students what will happen, but including them in some planning and prep. A second course theme that emerged has to do with relationships, growing a peer network through shared and explicitly collaborative experiences. This item is from a survey question that almost all students answered yes to. Have your connections with your classmates changed? And one student elaborated, quote, yes, I realize field research is a beautiful way to get to know more people. Camping makes for a great environment to loosen up and really get to know people in a profound way. And so far, I focused on the outdoor dimensions. And in the science realm, this connectedness was also central. Another student wrote, quote, instead of simple ideas being lost and undeveloped, as a group, we could combine our knowledge to build on predictions. Additionally, we were able to speed up data collection in a grand way, given the different roles we would each take. Some of the course elements that supported this theme were unstructured time outdoors together, like around a fire and over meals, and then collaboration on the two major experiential elements of the course, the science and the outdoor living. For students to gain confidence, it really helps if they can see their own progress clearly. And when they can see it in the science realm, it boosts their ability to see themselves as scientists. So these are our third and fourth themes. For about 40% of students, this was the first opportunity they'd had to conduct any scientific research. And so the inquiry-based approach in which students design their own projects was hard at first, but it led to some clear gains as they saw themselves becoming capable scientists. One student related, the research project that we did the second time around was much better than the first. We were able to gather data without bias, graph our information in a more scientific manner and ask questions that a scientist would have asked. I felt much more prepared to answer questions after our presentation because I was asking those questions myself as we were putting together our project. And another shared, when I first started this class, I had no idea what I was doing in the field. I was just kind of wandering around being dumb. This trip, I felt incredibly comfortable setting out with my group to make our own rapid research project and in my element in the field. So some key areas here, um, iterating the projects more than one to see that gain clearly, and then iterating the field time more than one overnight to be able to see the improvement from the beginning to the start of the class. To summarize what we learned, we proposed five eyes 
To level the experiential playing field, the course built inclusion, assuming no equipment or prior experience in either research or work in living outdoors. And we did that largely by making chances for students to immerse in both field living and the practice of science. To build the peer network, belonging, collaborative skills, students did both their science and their field living in teams instead of in competition, instead of alone, pursuing their projects in pods of four, rotating through cooking groups in teams of five with staff to facilitate and guide. To make gains visible, the course used iteration, repeated elements, more than one research project, more than one overnight. Asking students to write about their gains also might be an important part of building their awareness of the growth that happens. And finally, to make students into practicing scientists, the projects were inquiry led. Student groups generated the questions, hypotheses, study and sampling designs and analyses. They reported their own findings. In conclusion, we need a class like this for all of our majors, especially at a minority serving institution. But regardless of that, because all of our students that we followed experienced important gains. So we're writing grants now to tailor and scale this up to more majors and to refine our understanding of exactly what to give them all in order to optimize the balance between immersion on the one hand and reaching more students on the other. Finally, there's this idea in STEM that students have to master a lot of content first and only then can participate in the real research process. But we found that students just arriving at college and from many different majors were able to co-create research and to become scientists in the process without a lot of specific content mastery. That insight made clear to us that a flipped curriculum in biology, one that puts research at the front of the major experience to motivate and give meaning to subsequent content learning in things like statistics, chemistry, and genetics could be a powerful tool to improve retention in and finally diversify our field. Thank you.